when uh, we retell a Bible story at Big Idea, we will go through the Bible story very carefully. We'll figure out the key plot points, the key themes, and we'll set those aside as, you know, sacred, cannot be messed with, and then we'll mess with everything else. We'll just have lots and lots of goofy fun with everything else to make the story fresh, you know, even to grown-ups. Um, we'll also do things like, on occasion, lift an actual line from the Bible story and quote it, you know, in the film or have a character speak directly, quote, you know, a verse from the Bible story. So the story starts with Jonah getting a message from God, which is to go to Nineveh, you know, to tell them that they need to stop it. And instead of going to Nineveh, he sets sail for Tarshish. When he goes to buy the ticket, you know, Scooter the carrot is shocked. Uh, Tarshish? Why, that would take weeks. It's the other end of the world. And at the time, it actually was. Tarshish was on the Spanish Peninsula. Nineveh was in Assyria, the opposite direction, heading towards Asia, actually. So at that time in history, Tarshish and Nineveh were very nearly the opposite ends of the known world. So he goes in Joppa, you know, and this is accurate, goes in Joppa and books passage on a ship, sets sail, and then uh, overnight or the second day gets into a huge storm. Um, now, and this is where we start to pull some accurate lines. When Pa comes down the stairs and says, How can you sleep at a time like this? Get up and pray to your God, and maybe he'll have mercy on us and spare our lives. The sailors believe someone is at fault for this storm. So in the Bible, they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. So we changed that in our version to they play go fish, which we thought was more interesting than, than casting lots. And Jonah loses. His next lines are almost an exact quote. I'm a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land, and I'm running away from him. And so I ran, I ran, and I ended up here, and now everyone's in terrible danger, all because of me. I'm afraid the only thing left is to be thrown into the sea. But they don't do that. Instead, it's verse 13, the men did their best to row back to land. Mike wanted to play on that, and that was the boat motor sequence. It doesn't work. Same thing in the Bible story. It says um, they tried to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Before they throw them in, the sailors actually pray. It's verse 14, they cry out to God, Oh, Lord, don't let us die for this man's sin, and don't hold us responsible for his death. Oh, Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for your own good reasons. So they took Jonah, threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. That whole section Mike took almost literally right from uh, the Bible story. It is pretty clear in the Bible story that the whale swallowing Jonah wasn't meant as a punishment from God, it was God saving him. It was saving him from drowning. Uh, so it was actually provision to give him a second chance. The whale itself was the start of Jonah's second chance. So then he's in the whale and it says that the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto the dry land. So he goes to Nineveh to give them the message. He tells them what they're doing wrong and uh, amazingly the people just repent. Now this is interesting because no one really knows why. It doesn't say why they repented, but it is believed through, through the current archeological research that the people of Nineveh worshiped a fish god that people believe was called Dagon. And if that was the case, to hear that Jonah had been in the belly of a great fish would have been in essence for them to think that he had come from their god to them with a message. Either that or the, the alternate would have been our god, the fish god, had this guy, and this guy's God, the God of the Hebrews, made our God spit him up to give us a message. That's even, that's even more intimidating. This guy's God can beat up our God. If you've ever read the story of Jonah in a children's book or a children's Bible, they tend to end it right here. He went to Nineveh, he said, stop it. They said they were sorry, they repented, Jonah's happy, the Ninevites are happy, happy ending, everybody's happy, but they're skipping chapter four. Without chapter four, it's a story about obedience. With chapter four, it's a story about compassion and mercy. And this is where our story comes back in. Jonah went out and sat down at a place east of the city and waited to see what would happen to the city. He was convinced still that God was gonna destroy the city. In verse six of chapter four, it says, then the Lord God provided a vine and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. Again, showing how compassionate he is on Jonah. 
This is interesting, and this is key to the film. Verse 7, but at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the vine so that it withered. Jonah is so upset that his weed has died. God just calls him you know, on the mat and says, you care more about that vine than about all the people in that great city. The ending of the film seems so bizarre, it is actually probably the most literal retelling of the story of Jonah from the Bible uh, that you've ever bumped into.